Hi, in this video we will be exploring the concept of dynamic columns and splits. As an example, I've created this report where we have accounts going down the left hand side and then we have a dynamic column on the periods going across the top. Dynamic columns could be on a period or a date or some form of code, it really doesn't matter. Then we have splits up the top where tabs are created for each unique value that's discovered in the report. In this example they're on the companies so I can switch between tabs and view the different companies. Let's start by building the report in Publisher. Launch Publisher and start a new report and I'll just give the report a code and a title. Then we go to Career Builder and for this example, I'm going to be using a system called SAP Business One. And from that system, I'll be choosing the GL transactions table. Let's start building up our report. I'm going to put the account code and the account description and the amount and the period out into the columns. At the moment, all these filters are set to all. And you can see that we've got our periods going down the rows. What we'd like to do is change this behavior so we have the periods going across the top. And we want each amount to be for a particular period. So in other words, we want to bind the period to the amount. Let's go back to the query definition window. And we're going to take the period out of the outputs. And we'll come up to the period filter and we're going to give the period a name. Call it period. And I'll set the range for the periods. Because I'm using a demonstration database, I just need to go back in time. So I'm going to set some offsets. And I'll say, let's go to the start of the year, to the end of the year. So my periods across the top will be, will be between this range here. So We've given the period filter a name. The next step is to come to the amount and go to the options. And in the functions tab, you'll find a section called apply filters to this output. You can see our period is up the top here. Let's select this and then click on the button set as dynamic output. This process binds the filter to the output. And you can see the filter name now appears alongside the amount. Let's preview the data. And you can see now that the amounts are now appearing under the periods for each account. Now let's add more than one company into the query by going back to the filter on companies and holding down the control key so we select two companies. Let's hide the periods because we don't want the user to change the period and we will also hide the companies and we'll save this query and hit apply and go to the links tab and copy the URL address for the report. You can now paste this into the browser and view what the report looks like. You can see that we can change the accounts and when we execute it this is in fact a combination of those two companies. What, like, what I'd like to do now is apply a split to this report so that we get a tab for each company. So I'll go back to Publisher and I'll go to the Reporting tab and you can see there's an option here for, called Split. And it will create a split on every filter that has a name. You can see that I have an entry here for Company and Company plus Total. I'm going to select Company and Apply, and I'll refresh the report. You can see now that we still have our periods going across the columns, but now we have a split on the companies. If I had a filter on accounts or some other item and applied the split on those, the combination for all the values would appear as tabs across the top. Let's go back now and we'll try some 
other features like adding a total to the end of the periods. Come back into the query and I'm going to add a total at the end but before I do that let's give the amount a name so that we can bind the expression to the name instead of the description for the column. I'm going to add the exp expression now and if I come into current rows you can see here we have our amount. Just by referencing the amount and changing the description to total what Sharpalite will do is it knows that the amount has a value for each period and if you reference that amount out and do not apply the dynamic columns to that expression then it will be a total for everything that's in that range and you can see here that's placed a total on the end. Another variation of this would be to have some other field and bind the period to that other field as well and that way you could have two or three columns in the dynamic range for example actual budget and variance you just need to apply the dynamic column to each one of them what I'd like to do now is change this report so that we show dates going across the, the top instead of periods so I've dragged the posting date out to the filter area and what we need to do now is select a range for the uh, dates if I leave it as it is I'll get 365 days so I just need to cut that down a little bit I've changed the posting date to get the last few months of this year by using the end of year and setting some offsets let's give the posting date a name because this is what the dynamic columns bind to so I'm going to call this posting date and this time what we'll do is change the amount to not bind to the period so let's clear this but to the posting date so I'll set the posting date as the dynamic column and if we preview the data this time we'll have dates going across the columns the next thing I'd like to show you is how we can format the dates that are going across the columns so that we have maybe the month name for example let's go back and look at the amount column where we're binding the posting date and we'll go into the options and on the general tab we can customize the description and normally you would just type in a description here but the description will be the date and we want to change the format so we're going to use the expression templates to take control over what appears in the label. I'm just going to open up dynamic output value labels and there's a few templates here which we can choose from. I'm just going to choose this one here where we can format the year and the month and you can see here it's taking the value that's going to appear in the dynamic column and then when we can turn it into a date and format it. I'm just going to add the day as well. This one here will show the the month as a name. Let's go OK to that and just preview the data this time. You can see that now we've got the full name for the month and if we played around with the formats we could format that date in any number of ways. Next I'd like to change the style of the report so that instead of having accounts going down the side I'd like to have periods going down the side and accounts going across the top. The problem with this though is if I bind the account filter to the amount there'll be too many accounts so I just want to reduce the accounts to a particular type of account so that we don't have thousands of accounts going across the top. To do that we need to create a subquery on the account. Let's change the report by taking the accounts off the columns and I'm going to take out the accounting period and 
take the account code up into the filters or get rid of the posting date and we'll change the name for the amount back to its default. If I check the accounts, here are all the accounts, but these are too many. I only want a subset of the accounts to appear on the columns. So I'm going to go into the options for the account and I'm going to create a subquery. See that we're still in SAP Business 1 and we've got the company set to be the same as the company and the parent, but this time we want to change the table to chart of accounts and we're going to bring out the account code but we want to restrict the accounts that appear to a particular account type so we're going to bring that up into the filter and set it to income only. Let's go OK to that and we'll leave this as its default setting. Now we'll give the account a name and then we can come to the amount and just as before we can set the account filter to be bound to the amount column and we'll preview the data. So this time we have the accounts going across the columns and the periods going down. For the next report I'd like to do another variation where we have the companies on the columns. So what I'll do is right click on the company filter and we'll change the name to company and we'll bind that to the amount. Set it as dynamic and we'll preview the data. So in this case here we have Company Australia and the UK office. If I was then to take the periods off the outputs and put in an account code, we'd now have the accounts by company. As you can see, the dynamic columns are quite flexible, but there are some limitations. You just need to be careful that your filters are set correctly and that you don't create too many columns. Also, the columns will be dynamic depending on the the codes that fit between the ranges. For this reason, it's not always suitable for Excel-based reports. Excel would like to have a fixed number of columns. So if you're using dynamic columns in Excel, try and keep the columns to always have the same number. For example, a period range or a date range where the number of columns are not going to change. This has been a brief overview of dynamic columns and splits.